गुड आफ्टरनून ऑल एम आई ऑडिबल यस यस यू आर ऑडिबल थैंक यू सर आई थिंक लेट्स स्टार्ट आवर सेशन ए वॉम वेलकम टू ऑल फॉर द फर्स्ट सेशन ऑफ नेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस इन मैकेनिकल एंड सिविल इंजीनियरिंग 2021 and here uh, we are gathered here uh, for the civil engineering sessions and uh, the session is being chaired by uh, respected dr matthew bv professor in civil engineering department of college of engineering kidangu and uh, professor linsi koshi assistant professor in civil engineering department of college of engineering and management punnapra and uh, before commencing the session uh, it's my pleasure and great honor to introduce our chairs and uh, our first chair respected dr matthew bb he has been working as professor in civil engineering department of college of engineering kidangu and he has 33 years of teaching experience and uh, he graduated from thrissur engineering college and uh, post graduation from iit madras in building technology and construction management and uh, he completed his research from madras university in the uh, area of civil engineering and engineering education and uh, he has been chaired for so many conference papers and it's a great honor to have you here sir with us to chair our session welcome sir thank you thank you and our next chair uh, professor linsi koshi uh, assistant professor and head of the department in ce department of college of engineering and management punnapra Uh, let me introduce her first she uh, graduated from karunya institute of technology coimbatore and post graduation from hindustan college of engineering chennai in structural engineering she has been working in teaching field for more than 13 years and it's an honor to have you here ma'am with us to chair the sessions and uh, welcome ma'am and uh, we have our internal chair professor nidha p Uh, assistant professor in civil engineering department of college of engineering talisheri and i have officially welcome her also to chair accompany the chairs and uh, next we have uh, five participants are there and i uh, welcome each and every participant uh, on this conference and i wish all the success uh, for the presentation and all and uh, finally i invite all those who are present here and i request your cooperation throughout the uh, sessions and thank you and uh, i think uh, let's start the presentations uh, before that just uh, i just want to remind some rules to the participants uh, that is we have five presentations and for each presentation um, uh, we will allow 30 minutes and out of 30 minutes um, you have 20 minutes for presenting the topic and 10 minutes for interaction session okay so i just uh, uh, remind you i request you to strictly follow this time schedule because we have to wind up our sessions within the scheduled time so uh, please uh, keep in mind that and uh, so let's start the presentation uh, shall we start sir matthew sir and linsi ma uh please 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 get started okay sir okay uh, so uh, our first participant is uh, miss sneha binoy to present the topic of behavior of post tension shear board with external energy dissipating reinforcement under the effect of open i think sneha are you the sneha binoy hello ma'am is it audible okay you please Yeah, audible. You please uh, share okay, the slide first, and after that we will start time. Okay. 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 Ma'am, is it visible now? Yeah, it's visible. Okay. Can I start? Uh, please, uh, please put it in the presentation. Keep it. Okay. Keep it the uh, slide in okay. presentation mode. Okay. 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 Good afternoon, everyone. 
I'm here to present my paper on the title Behavior of Post Tension Shear Wall with External Energy Dissipating Reinforcements Under the Effect of Openings. So this is the overview of the topics that I will be covering in today's session. Introduction. The seismic design of buildings is of utmost importance to ensure their structural safety and efficient performance when subjected to earthquake motion. In the last two decades, shear wall have become an important part of mid and high rise buildings. They offer an economic means to provide lateral load resistance in multi-story buildings. But with traditional RC shear wall construction, damage is likely to occur. Thus, the cause and effect of damage during an earthquake may be significant to the occupant. So in recent times, one of the important advancements is the use of post-tension tendons in conventional RC shear walls. Priestley et al. first proposed the idea of utilizing unbonded PT tendons in shear wall. The main feature of post-tension shear walls are its self-centering potential, its higher energy dissipation capacity, and redu it reduces residual deformation. So the figure shows a conventional RC shear wall in which unbonded PT tendons and partially unbonded mild steels are utilized. Coming to the advantages of post-tension shear wall, it has been identified that incorporating PT tendons can increase the total strength and rigidity of the wall. It reduces the use of vertical mild steel reinforcement. It allows nonlinear displacement without yielding of PT bars, eliminates permanent deformation, and the shear wall can experience large lateral deformation. It decreases rebar congestion and the wall uh, shows excellent behavior in terms of deflection and cracking. And from the literature's review, it has been identified that the lateral load Sneha, capacity sorry, and if, uh, Sneha, sorry yes, for interrupting. Uh, we, uh, we can't see the current slide. Uh, is it now visible? No, only the first, Hello, first slide is visible. Okay. Uh, I will share once again. Ma'am, what about now? Okay, uh, I think uh, it's thirteenth slide, right? So you yes, you please summary. start from yes, the first digit. You please start okay. from the first digit. Okay. 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 Oh, okay. Uh, Okay, introduction. The seismic design of buildings is of utmost importance to ensure the structural safety and efficient performance. So in the last two decades, shear walls have become an important part of mid and high rise buildings. They offer an economic means to provide lateral load resistance in multi-story buildings. But with traditional RC shear wall construction, damage is likely to occur and the cost and effect of damage can be significant to the occupant of the building. So in recent time, one of the important advancement is the use of post-tension tendons in conventional shear walls. Priestley et al. first proposed the idea of utilizing unbonded PT tendons and the main feature of PT uh, shear walls are its self-centering potential, higher energy dissipation capacity and reduced residual deformation. So the figure shows uh, the schematic representation of PT shear wall in which unbonded PT tendons and partially unbonded mild steels is utilized. Advantages. Coming to the advantages of post tension shear wall, it has been identified that incorporating PT tendons can increase the total strength and rigidity of the shear wall. It reduces the use of vertical mild steel reinforcement. It allows nonlinear displacement without yielding of PT bars. It eliminates the permanent deformation and the shear wall can experience large lateral deformation. It decreases rebar congestion and the shear wall can show, show excellent behavior in terms of deflection and cracking. Literature review. In the literature's review, it has been identified that the lateral load capacity and effective stiffness are found to be increased as the PT stress level increases. The overall reinforcement area can be reduced by using unbonded PT tendons and the wall ductility is observed to be enhanced. 
It was noted that as the self-centering capability increases, the residual displacement decreases. With the increase of the wall aspect ratio, the drift capacity can be improved remarkably. Absence of PT force can result in excessive uplift, horizontal slip, and degradation of lateral strength and stiffness. Although increasing the PT forces can increase the initial stiffness, it can negatively affect the displacement ductility as well as reduce energy dissipation. The failure mode of shear wall with PT tendons is primarily controlled by yielding of the PT strands. Research gap. Globally, the recent focus is to obtain an efficient PT shear wall system, and there is a broad scope for readily adaptable and replaceable energy dissipation systems to be identified. The behavior of hybrid shear walls when coupled together has been least explored, and the use of various tenant profiles and the interaction of unbonded PT walls with other building components needs a thorough study. Objectives. The main objective of this study is to determine the effect of openings in hybrid shear wall with different opening configuration under the effect of monotonic loading and suggest a suitable opening configuration. Performance of hybrid shear wall under the effect of openings. The shear wall is having a height of 3.6 meter and width of 2.2 meter and a thickness of 0.1 meter. Here, the term hybrid reflects the fact that a combination of PT tendon and EDR, which is the external energy dissipating reinforcement in the form of mild steel bar, is utilized. Here, EDR spans externally and uh, it is attached to the shear wall with the help of an angle and channel section. The angle section utilized is ISA 75 by 75 by 10 and channel section is ISMC 100. The wall is provided with four number of 20 mm of 5 PT tendons which are embedded inside the concrete shear wall. So this is the dimension of the shear wall and the foundation. Uh, the foundation is having a length of 2400 mm, a width of 300 mm and a thickness of 100 mm. So the figure shows the details of the PT shear wall with external energy dissipating reinforcement. Here we can see that four number of PT tendons is utilized and the shear wall is having a height of 3600 mm. The uh, EDR, that is the external energy dissipating reinforcement, is placed outside at the bottom of the shear wall and it is attached to the shear wall with the help of an angle and a channel section. Coming to the connection details of EDR, the EDR is having a tapered portion. It is having a diameter of 10 mm at the angrish end and it is having a uh, diameter of 9 mm at the middle portion. Coming to the effect of openings, a uh, single band of openings with various opening shapes like rectangle, square, circle and diamond are contrived in the present study. The area of each opening is kept constant as 1 into 10 raised to 5 mm square so that the shear wall can behave like a monolithic cantilever wall. The openings are located at the mid portion of the shear wall and the location of openings is not varied in the present study. The shear wall is constructed with M40 grade concrete and FE415 steel and for uh, reference purpose, uh, this specimen is compared with a shear wall without opening. So these are the opening shapes considered for the present study. That is rectangle, square, circle and diamond opening. So this is a uh, table giving the total opening percentage and number of openings for shear walls. This is a finite element model, model in ANSI software. Uh, the opening with rectangular opening is having a size of 500 by 300 mm. The square uh, opening is having a size of 316.3 by 316.3 mm and all the openings is spaced at 300 mm. So for square, uh, circular opening the diameter is 356.82 mm and for diamond opening D1 and D2 corresponds to 500 and 400 mm respectively. Coming to the reinforcement details, the wall is provided with four number of 20 mm PT tendons and four number of EDR is located outside the shear wall. The reinforcements are spaced at 100 mm and each opening is separated by a distance of 300 mm. In total, 35 number of 12 mm five bars are placed as longitudinal reinforcements and 15 number of 12 mm five bars are placed as lateral reinforcement with a uniform spacing of 100 mm. At both ends of the shear wall, four vertical bars are provided to simulate a concealed boundary element. So this is the reinforcement details of this reference specimen. The specimen with rectangular opening, square opening, circular opening and diamond opening. Next is the material properties. The behavior of concrete is described using a concrete damage plasticity model as shown in figure A and the reinforcement and EDR are model using a bilinear curve with strain hardening with reference to the yield and ultimate stress and strain value as shown in figure B. 
the properties of uh, such as modulus of elasticity, compressive strength, Poisson's ratio, yield strength and ultimate strength of materials, concrete, PT tendon, distribution steel and EDR is mentioned in the table given here. Element description. A concrete wall foundation, angle and channel section, loading plates, EDR and PT bars are modeled using solid 186 element uh, provided in ANSYS software and the reinforcement is modeled using beam 188 element. So this is the finite element mesh model of the shear wall with and without openings. This is the mesh model of the foundation, angle, channel and EDR. Here, median type meshing is adopted and the corresponding number of nodes and elements is, uh, is uh, given in the table. Coming to the loading, the effect of openings under monotonic loading is uh, analyzed. The monotonic loads are applied to a loading plate of size 200 by 100 mm at a height of 2.793 meter from the base of the foundation. Prior to loading, a design tensile force of 73.9 kN is induced in each PT tendons. And after that, loading is applied and each increment of loading is kept as 10 kN. The base of the foundation is kept fixed to stimulate a strong flow behavior. The obtained result is compared in terms of base shear, deformation, maximum stress and strain, yield stiffness, ultimate stiffness and ductility. Verification of the finite element model. So the uh, present numerical model is verified with a numerical model developed by Tawari et al. And it was observed that at the maximum drift of 2.4 percent each, the stress was concentrating on the middle portion of the EDR as the weak swan was uh, shifted from the anchorage end to the uh, middle portion by changing the diameter. And the base shear value corresponding to 2.4 percent each drift from the journal value obtained was 870 kN, whereas for the validated model it was uh, obtained as 921 kN. So the maximum difference in uh, obtained in the base shear of the two numerical models were observed as 5.86 percent each, and hence the numerical model developed was considered suitable for further studies. So coming to the results and discussion of the shear ball with openings, the first parameter considered was a base shear. So it was observed that for the reference specimen, the shear wall uh, reference specimen with no uh, opening, it was able to take the load up to 100 mm, while all the shear walls with opening failed before that. Uh, it was uh, The curve is basically a bilinear curve, and it was observed that the stiffness of the shear wall has started changing due to the initiation of yield in the extreme tension bar. And uh, it was observed that the full wall with no opening was, uh, was able to take the load up to 100 mm, uh, for opening with square and diamond shape, the yielding started early at a load of 832 kN and 998 kN respectively, whereas for full wall, the yielding started at 894 kN. It was observed that uh, the base shear at the uh, for full wall was 1508.2 kN and the base shear decreased as the walls were provided with openings. So the table gives the ultimate base shear displacement of all the specimen and it can be seen that the reference specimen had the highest base shear. Uh, coming to the uh, shear walls with openings, we can see that diamond and square opening could take the load up to 60 and 70 mm, which was nearly close to that of what reference specimen could take. The least amount of a base shear was observed for rectangular opening. A 3.44 percentage decrease in base shear was observed in rectangular opening. Uh, while the performance of diamond opening was seen comparable with that of the uh, full wall with respect to both bilinear curve pattern as well as its ability to take its load. The ratio values of both full wall and diamond openings were almost equal and only a 30% load, car uh, load carrying capacity was reduced. Next is the deformation uh, pattern. The deformation conduit plots of shear wall with and without openings is uh, shown, uh, shown here. Here we can see that uh, the shear wall with no opening had a, uh, had only a deformation of 40 mm, while uh, shear walls with openings had higher uh, higher deformation. The maximum deformation was uh, was shown by square openings uh, uh, by a magnitude of 96.328 mm. Uh, comparing the the shear wall with openings, the least amount of deformation was obtained uh, for rectangular openings with a deformation of 50 mm. Uh, the deformation was found to be 49.84 percentage and 43.96 percentage higher in diamond and circular opening respectively. 
probable comparison can be made between diamond and square opening considering the fact that they could resist the load up to 70 mm and 60 mm respectively which is nearly closer to what full wall could resist that is up to 100 mm so comparing diamond and square opening relative to the full wall it was observed that diamond opening was found to have a deformation of 79.745 mm while square opening had a uh, had a deformation of 96.328 which was 58.47 percentage higher next parameter is the maximum stress and strain value it was observed that uh, the maximum stress and maximum elastic strain was observed maximum for the reference specimen uh, the least amount of stress was op uh, was uh, observed for rectangular specimen with a stress corresponding to 619.66 mpa so the figure shows the equivalent elastic strain contour, contour of shear walls he sorry uh, here we can see that uh, of, uh, for shear walls with opening, the strain is uh, concentrated on uh, on the opening portion, and it was observed that for a rectangular and square opening, uh, the po uh, the portion that act as a coupling beam had the highest strain portion. So, providing diagonal reinforcement can be considered as a possible option to reduce the stra uh, strain concentration near that portion. Uh, in rectangular, uh, providing diagonal reinforcement can be considered as an option to reduce the stresses near the openings. Next a parameter is the yield and the ultimate stiffness value. So here, yield, uh, yield stiffness corresponds to the yield load by ultimate uh, displace, uh, ultimate uh, yield displacement, whereas ultimate stiffness corresponds to the ultimate uh, load divided by the ultimate displacement. So the uh, table shows the uh, yield stiffness of the shear wall with and without opening. And here it can be observed that the ref reference specimen had the highest yield stiffness corresponding to 105.832 kN per mm. And a uh, square and circular uh, opening had similar uh, yield stiffness corresponding to 99 kN per mm. The least amount of yield stiffness was observed by rectangular opening. And considering ultimate stiffness, the uh, full wall had a least amount of ultimate stiffness corresponding to 15.08 kN per mm. The rectangular and square openings had similar ultimate stiffness corresponding to 29 kN per mm. Here it was observed that Sneha, the square and circular more minutes, okay? Okay. Uh, here minutes, square okay? and circular. Okay, ma'am. Experience only a 6.4% decrease in yield stiffness, whereas for diamond opening, a 7.4% decrease in yield stiffness was observed. Considering ultimate stiffness, shear wall with opening had higher stiffness than shear wall without opening, with maximum stiffness exhibited by rectangular and circular opening. The result de uh, depict the fact that although stiffness of shear wall is affected by providing openings, major stiffness degradation wasn't observed as the opening dimension were kept small. The last parameter is the ductility. And ductility is defined as the ratio between top displacement and the displacement at the onset of yield of the outermost vertical bar. Here, ductility implies high deformation without appreciable loss of strength. And it also implies inelastic deformation or energy dissipation. So the table gives the uh, ductility values for uh, openings and the reference specimen. It was observed that the ductility varied between 4 to 5. Uh, and the highest ductility was observed by the reference specimen. Uh, considering the shear wall with opening, the highest amount of ductility was uh, shown by diamond opening. Uh, except diamond opening, all the other walls experienced a 60% reduction in their ductility, whereas only 33.37% decrease in ductility was observed in diamond opening. So the sliding displacement associated with significant yielding may be considered responsible for the reduction of ductility. Coming to the conclusion. In the present study, concrete shear wall with both post tension tendons and energy dissipating reinforcements was considered. A study on the nonlinear behavior of hybrid shear wall with and without opening is performed through the conduct of monotonic uh, sorry, monotonic load test. Conclusive outcomes drawn from the analysis are the results of the shear wall under monotonic loading shows that the maximum load was carried by full wall without opening. Although providing opening can decrease its load carrying capacity, diamond opening is excel both in terms of ultimate load and uh, ultimate load carrying capacity and ductility. A 3.44 percentage decrease in ratio was observed in rectangular opening, while the performance of diamond opening was seen comparable with that of full wall with respect to bilinear curve pattern, as well as its ability to take load. Even though stress concentrations are higher at openings, especially for diamond openings, providing diagonal uh, reinforcement can be considered as an option to reduce the stresses. 
the ratio values of both full wall and diamond opening were almost equal and only 30% load carrying capacity was reduced and shear walls with opening experienced a relatively lesser stresses and strain with rectangular opening having having the minimum stress of 619.66 MPa square and circular opening experienced a 6.4% decrease in yield stiffness whereas diamond opening experienced a 7.4% decrease in yield stiffness ductility of shear wall with diamond opening was only reduced by 33.37% uh from the present analysis it has been inferred that providing diamond opening can be considered a possible option as the result proves to be in good agreement with the actual full shear wall without compromising on the structure's performance and its load carrying ability these are my references thank you Uh, thank you, Sneha. Uh, the session is open for discussion now. Uh, could you please uh, tell uh, the reason? Uh, behind uh, uh, choosing uh, the distance between the openings. Uh, uh, the three hundred. Uh, are you talking about the three hundred mm spacing? Yeah. Uh, uh, I have referred some journals, and it has been uh, inferred that the spacing uh, can be in between three hundred to five hundred mm. So I choose a uh, three hundred mm spacing. And also, I wanted to uh, distribute the area of the opening equally. Hence, I have considered 300 mm spacing, sir. Sneha, please turn on your camera while uh, answering the question, okay? Oh, okay, okay, okay. 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 How, how do you do the design part of this shear one? Uh, Ma'am, I have the uh, design part based on the uh, my base journal. I have referred that as well as I have referred other journals as well, considering uh, similar studies. Uh, you have chosen a tensile force of 73.9 kN, no? How do you get that from the journal uh, itself? Uh, from my base journal, yes, ma'am. Okay. All these value, all the material properties has been adopted from my base journal. Okay. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, ma'am. Hello. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, uh, in your study, the diamond opening is uh, more efficient, yeah? right? Yes, ma'am. Yes. From the analysis, it has been identified that diamond can perform better than the other three openings. Mm, how do you do this dec uh, ductility study of the shear wall? Uh, ductility has been carried out uh, based on the uh, top displacement by the uh, displacement corresponding to the onset of the uh, yielding. Okay, thank you. What will be the advantage of uh, providing openings in the shear wall actually uh, it can be considered for architectural purposes like window openings door openings but i have considered only uh, the uh, opening size corresponding to window openings hello sir 
yes, I could hear you. Okay. Sneha, whether you checked if you are yes. changing the size of the area and the spacing, what will happen? Uh, whether the diamond no. structure uh, is no. uh, efficient or not? No, I haven't carried out that part of the study, ma'am. I have kept the area constant and uh, studied the rest. Okay. Uh, how do you choose this uh, so um the can you take the slide number 32 this one okay how do you choose this solid 186 as your uh, element uh, ma'am uh, it was uh, given uh, the report from the access show that it chose a solid 186 for the concrete wall and all those elements and it was assigned beam 188 automatically for the reinforcement what are these properties of this solid 186 uh it has three degrees of freedom whereas for beam 188 it has six degrees of freedom Practically in a building, uh, do we have any constraints regarding uh, the shape of the opening? Practically, it is uh, difficult to construct diamond opening. Uh, it is easier to construct a rectangular or a square opening. Uh, uh, but uh, from the analysis regarding this type of shear wall, like the uh, hybrid shear wall, um, Although the uh, construction aspect is uh, difficult, it can uh, prove to be an efficient solution during an earthquake activity or uh, when lateral force is acting on a structure. So it is difficult to construct, yes, but uh, it can perform well during uh, any activity. Remya, ma'am, uh, if there are no further questions, I think I uh, can proceed to the next. Okay, sir. Okay, let's move on to next presentation. Uh, our next participant is Miss Steffi John. Uh, the topic is comparison study on the performance of built-up pattern using hot rolled steel and called form to steel. Steffi, Steffi John, are yes. you there? Yes. Okay. yes. Please uh, start sharing your slide. Man, uh, am I audible and my screen is visible? Yes, you are audible. You can start now. Okay. Okay, thank you. 
Good afternoon all. I am here to present my paper on comparison study on the performance of a build-up battened column using hot rolled steel and cold formed steel. And myself, Steffi Zon, and I am guided by Indomis. The contents discussed are the following. Introduction. Build-up column composed of two parallel main components interconnected by lacings or battened plates. And CFS means that is cold formed steel goods are created by working on thin steel sheets using stamping, rolling, or presses to deform the steel sheets into required products which are usable. And hot roll refers to a mill process in which you roll the steel at a temperature above its recrystallization temperature. Steels of different grades can be produced as hot rolled or cold rolled. The figure one shows the cold formed steel image and two shows the hot rolled steel. And cold rolled steel means if the sheets that are undergoes compression between the rollers and cold formed steel for that are pulled such as bars or tubes are drawn not rolled and the main difference between the hrs and cfs are as follows the material properties based on the unit weight is comparatively huge for hot roll steel and more tactile in nature and while cfs it is less unit weight and less tactile and HRS are more load bearing members and they are used mostly in seismic prone areas and CFS have wide applications like building frames, automobiles, aircraft, home appliances, etc. And its high unit weight increases the overall cost for HRS and less for CFS and uh, flexibilities are more for CFS and more, mostly standard shapes are uh, used in case of hot rolled states and the research possibilities are almost in advanced status HRS and, and it is in developing stage for CFS. And the objectives of my project were got to, to study the effect of parameters like material, batten spacing and batten width in builder pattern column to carry out comparison of both CFS and HRS builder pattern column by finite element analysis in ANSI software and determine the significance of using CFS builder pattern column in construction to carry out buckling analysis and determine the most effective one of on using HRS and CFS. The literatures, the main literatures I have reviewed are the following and the research gap. By review of the literatures, it can be summarized that experimental and numerical investigations of build-up columns are carried out by varying the parameters like sections used for build-up inter intermediate pattern spacing and size of the pattern. Also, the effect of bolted welded connections and significance of using fasteners and the seismic response of build-up build column L also studied. And the main aim of this study is to carry it out comparison of both CFS and HRS build-up pattern column by finite element analysis in ANSI software. A normal steel build-up column is also analyzed for comparing and determining the most efficient one on using HRS and CFS. A spacing variations of 200 and 300 mm is analyzed in most of the journals. So a variations of 150, 200 and 250 mm is used in my project work along with a pattern width of 8 mm, 10 mm and 12 mm variations. The methodology I have adopted Topic selection, literature survey, study the comparison of CFS and HRS buildup by varying pattern thickness and spacing and model is generated using ANSI software and analysis is carried out, results and discussion and finally conclusion. The structural details of the model are column height of 2100 uh, 2, mm and intermediate pattern plate of dimension 130 into 100 into each and end pattern plate of 130 into 200 into each and spacing between the channels as 50 and channels of dimension 160 into 60 into 8 and they are welded connections and then various materials like structural steel, HRS and CFS are used and pattern spacing variations 150, 200 and 250 and width variations 8, 10 and 12 mm. And the material properties of the structural steel selected as of grade of steel to FE 250 and Engs modulus into 10 raised to 5 newton per mm square and yield strength 250 newton per mm square and Poisson's ratio of 0.3 density of 7.848 into 10 raised to minus 5 newton per mm cube and the similarly the material property of CFS and HRS are as follows and the 
figure 4 shows the details of a builder patent column investigated in this study. Here the channel sections are placed back to and they are interconnected by patents. And the normal steel buildup column is also analyzed for comparing and determining the most efficient one on using HRS and CFS so that we can determine the significance of using CFS buildup pattern column in construction. Next is modeling. The channel cross section and patterns are modeled by providing appropriate coordinate along with the length of the channel with the two pin ended conditions. And the figure shows the section of the buildup column and elevation and the typical mesh generation using the program controlled measure as drawn. And at the top, axial compressive load is applied in the face of the end plate and it is distributed uniformly throughout the ends of the specimen. Here, axial load of 10,000 Newton and sulfate of 836 Newton is taken for analysis. And load, load carrying capacity is given by structural load into load multiplier. And the total structural load is equal to 10,836 Newton by adding both axial and sulfate. And for specimen labeling, is BS1A means build up column with spacing 150 mm and batten width 8 mm. Similarly, S1 means 150 mm and S2 means 200 and two, S3 means 250 mm spacings and ABC are the batten thickness or width that are 8, 10 and 12 mm and the analysis. Linear analysis have been carried out to identify the critical load and its corresponding buckling modes. It is performed by keeping the stiffness of the structure remained unchanged and varying density, Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio of the material. And the total deformation after the static structural analysis is here as follows. And the equivalent stress of specimen after static structural analysis is shown in the figure 9. And the figure 10 shows the total deformation of specimen after buckling analysis. The equivalent stress of specimen after buckling analysis. And the result and discussion uh, results for S1 spaced batten column. That means 150 mm batten spaced column as follows and the buckling load multiplier values and equivalent stress, equal, buckling stress value and the load carrying capacity for various materials like structural and hot rolled steel and cold formed steel. And the load versus thickness graph for the hot rolled steel and cold formed steel is drawn. And here, from the graph, it is clear that the load carrying capacity is more for cold formed steel and it is higher at the 12 mm pattern thickness. And the load value is increased to 0.636 percentage when pattern thickness changed from 8 to 10 and 0.659 percentage increased for 10 to 12 mm pattern thickness. And similarly for structural steel, 2.644 percentage from 8 to 10 and 0.658 percentage when thickness changed from 10 to 12. So 12 mm pattern thickness gives better load carrying capacity for both CFS and HRS in 150 mm intermediate pattern spacing, that is BS1C. And the results for S2 space means 200 mm pattern spacing are as follows. And the load versus thickness graph shows that um, the CFS gives better load carrying values than HRS and 12 mm pattern thickness gives better value and the load value is increased to 0.466 percentage when pattern thickness changed from 8 to 210 and 0.659 percentage increased for 10 to 212. And similarly for structural steel, 2.474 percentage from 8 to 210 and 0.658 percentage from 10 to 12 mm thickness change. And 12 mm is also, and similarly 12 mm pattern thickness gives better load carrying capacity uh, for both CFS and HRS in 200 mm intermediate pattern spacing, that is BS2C. And the results for S3 spaced batten column, that is 250 mm, uh, is as follows. And the load versus thickness graph shows the uh, cold form steels gives better values and uh, a gradual increase from 8, 8, 10, and 12 mm pattern thickness. And 12 mm pattern thickness gives maximum load value. And the load value is increased 1.764 percentage when pattern thickness changed from 8 to 10 and 1.024 percentage for 10 to 12 mm 
change in pattern thickness. Similarly, for structural steel, 1.73 percentage from 8 to 10, and 1.027 percentage in uh, thickness change from 10 to 12. And 12 mm pattern thickness gives better load carrying capacity in both of the case, that is BS3C. And in all the spacing variations, we can find 12 mm pattern thickness gives the maximum load carrying capacity. Comparison study of hot roll steel and cold formed steel columns. Build up column with 8 mm pattern thickness. The comparison of the comparison shows that here also CFS gives better values and 150 mm um, batten spacing is gives better value, uh, more load carrying capacity. And the bar chart shows the uh, load by load carrying capacity variations in 150 and 200 mm and 250 mm intermediate pattern spacings and uh, 150 and 200 mm pattern spaced model shows 2.702 percentage increase in load carrying capacity than HRS and in case of 250 mm spaced models shows 2.703 percentage increase than HRS. Build up column with 10 mm pattern thickness the load, load carrying capacity for uh, HRS and CFS as follows and the bar chart shows that here also 150 mm gives maximum value and uh, 150 and 200 mm pattern spaced model shows 2.702 percentage increase in load carrying capacity than HRS and in case of 250 mm spaced model shows 2.701 in percentage increase than HRS. Build up column with 12 mm pattern thickness uh, the values as follows and the bar chart shows 150 mm gives maximum value and uh, 150 mm, 200 mm and 250 mm pattern space model shows 2.702 percentage increase in load carrying capacity than HRS and so in all the cases CFS gives the better results than HRS and also 150 mm intermediate pattern spacing that is S1 gives better value in both CFS and HRS material. So BS1C with CFS material is most effect effective structure can be found. And significance of using CFS with the pattern column in construction. The CFS has have more load carrying capacity about 2.7 percentage more than HRS. This feature make it to be more used than HRS making build up columns. CFS materials are easier to handle and does not crack, split, deform or shift from its location or dimensions. Steel strength allows designs with longer spans and less steel is needed to bear a specific load uh, than other materials resulting in a lighter frame. The conclusions can be drawn are with increase in pattern thickness up to 12 mm, the load value is improved. So 12 mm pattern thickness gives better load carrying capacity for both CFS and HRS and HRS and structural steel behaves in similar manner, only very small difference is seen in the load values. The 150 mm intermediate pattern spacing gives better values in both CFS and HRS. With the increase in spacing between the intermediate patterns, the load bearing capacity is decreasing. CFS have more load carrying capacity about 2.7 percentage more than HRS in all the cases. And for 150 mm spaced column, 2.64 percentage increase in maximum load value. Pattern thickness change from 8 to 10 and 0.65 percentage for 10 to 12 mm thickness change. For 200, it is 2.47 increase in maximum load value. Then pattern thickness change from 8 to 10 and 0.65 percentage increase for 10 to 12 uh, thickness change. For 250 mm space column, 1.77 percentage increase in maximum load value. When pattern thickness change from 8 to 10 and 1.02 percentage increase for 10 to 12 mm thickness change. The, the most effective structure obtained from all the model analyzed is BS1C with CFS material. In the scope for future work, uh, the comparison of CFS and HRS in build-up pattern column along with pattern thickness and spacing variation in studies in my project work, the seismic performance of build-up pattern column under different cases can be studied further. These are my reference. Thank you.
Okay, thank you, Steffi. Now we come to question and succession. Okay, Steffi, can you yes. hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, you in the in your study, it is clear that this call form carry more load than uh, HFS, right? Yes, yes. Uh, why it is like that? Why this call form carry more uh, having more load carrying capacity than halt rod? Due to its strain hardening effect, its strength is more than uh, hot rod steel. What do you mean by this strain hardening effect? It's actually uh, we are pressing between pressing and uh, pulling and. Here, hot rolling is a mill process and um, cold formed means stamping, rolling or process. That means it is uh, elongated and it is uh, reduced its thickness to us uh, and pick back, become simply simplified and make it more use, usable and comfortable. And from the figure, it is clear, I think. Hot rolled steels are more heavy sections than cold formed steels. Uh, what about the connection details between these uh, batons with column? Did you do any analysis regarding the connection? Uh, actually, uh, I don't get it. Once more. Conne connection details of the baton with the column. Uh, it is welded connection. It's 4 mm thickness welded connection is provided. And uh, it is from met metallic arc welding cord IS816. Um, I, I mean XP 816. So what is the boundary condition you have adopted for this? Hinged condition. Hinged. Yes. So it is given that uh, hinged with wrapping fixed in. What do you mean by that? Hinged with wrapping fixed edge. Actually, I have given only two pin and dot condition. Wrapping fixed end, I don't know. Uh, it's in the report, it is given that uh, pin with wrapping fixed end is given as the boundary condition. I'm sorry, ma'am, it's my mistake. Mistake. I don't think so. It is a mistake. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Steffi, yes, uh, you mentioned in slide number four, HRS has uh, load bearing capacity is more. Yes, ma'am. But uh, Finally, after your analysis, you are getting HRS has less load carrying capacity, right? Then what is happening? Why this load carrying capacity is reducing? Uh, load carrying capacity is more for CFS. So, uh, take your slide number five. Somewhere you mentioned that the load bearing capacity of uh, HRS is more. That means where ductility is given more important, we go for CS, um, HRS materials because CFS have less ductility due to its. No, load bearing, minimum. like that you mentioned, I think before that. Uh, yes. Slide number three or.
load bearing i think in that table uh, table uh, okay load bearing capacity is more for cps i okay anyway uh, uh, how you got that load bearing capacity of uh, hrs is more this is actually i have it referred from internet uh, here load carrying capacity is more when case of ductility is given more important that is seismic prone areas we go for hrs materials and yeah, the point. material is same now uh, that analysis also you are taking the same material then yes. after the analysis you are getting uh, hrs has less load carrying capacity then what is happening in between that that is the material property difference now uh, cfs are may, uh, more uh, less tactile they are made by strain hardening effect and it is it is more comfortable to use and hrs are um, much more heavier so we usually we prefer nowadays cfs goods and uh, from the analysis it is i from anal analyzing both say, uh, different materials i have obtained the results okay then uh, how you choose this uh, spacing from 150 to 250 is there any uh, code or a standard range from 150 to 250 that is actually uh, the spacing variations of 200 and 300 mm is analyzed in most of the journals and what what happens in between them and before that i want to check it so i go for uh, 150 200 and 250 then what is the uh, spacing as per general? Uh, what are the result obtained up to 300? If you are choosing this uh, spacing from 150 to 300. I also concluded that uh, lesser spacing gives much better and they preferred uh, 200. Okay, then uh, batten thickness also. Is there any code portion or uh, something from 10 to 12? Batten thickness. Um, also, I uh, chosen from the journals. From uh, a very uh, usually only one pattern thickness, or uh, are mostly done in most of the journal, and I have taken a ten and twelve are there, and I have chosen eight. For your analysis, you have uh, taken as eight. Eight, ten, and twelve. Uh, three case I have done the analysis. Okay. What was the basis? As for uh, IS 800, was... okay, sir. Okay. Uh, what was the basis for choosing the column height as 0 0.1 meter actually? Uh, that is actually taken from the journal paper itself. Uh, they have also done with. Uh, a height of 2100 mm and I have chosen it by varying the parameters only. Sir, it is clear? Okay, okay. Is there any question? Lincina. Okay. Can you hear me? Hello. Hello, yes, ma'am. 
Uh, you didn't refer IS 800 for your uh, study. Is steel code is. Yes. So in that it is given the design uh, specification for batten columns, right? Yes, miss. So in that, uh, what is the space uh, thickness of the batons you have to provide? Then spacing of the batons you have to provide. All that is given now. Uh, that is based on the least rate. Uh, I mean, slenderness ratio. No, uh, this is a composite structure uh, where the uh, slenderness ratio cannot be found. It is uh, in a software. It is actually uh, calculated automatically. And uh, I go through that. I find it that it's limiting between the uh, saying about the slender. No, I'm asking uh, you told no uh, the spacing all you have referred the journal. That's yes, why sir. I ask you I refer the highest eight hundred for the design. I I go through that. But what is the standard uh, specification for the spacing and all for the batten columns? It's um, not greater than. Uh, 50 mm or uh, uh, 0.77 times this slenderness ratio. Okay, just see that uh, the design part in the IS 800. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thanks. Okay, sir. Uh, shall we move on to next participant? Yeah, please uh, proceed to the next. Oh, okay. Sir. Okay, let me call the next participant. Our next participant is Miss Anila Benny. The topic is seismic mitigation controlling mass irregular buildings with plotting story as tuned mass damper. Anila Benny. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Okay, please share the presentation. Is it visible? Yeah, it's visible. Okay. I think that there are some disturbance, sound disturbance. Are there. That's that is um, from the loudspeaker. Hello. Uh, yeah, it's okay. Uh, okay, you, you you can start now. Okay. Good afternoon, all. Myself, Anila Bindi, and I'm going to present my topic on seismic mitigation control in mass irregularity buildings with floating story as tuned mass dump. Here are the contents. In introduction, as we all know, dampers are mechanical systems which dissipate the earthquake energy into a specialized devices which deform or yield during earthquake. So the structure has to resist a lesser amount of earthquake forces and the dampers, it increases the lifespan of the structures. And in the case of a normal structure, when excitation happens to structure, the structure shows a response. But in the case of a uh, structure with PED, that is passive energy dissipation device, when excitation happens to such structure with PED, there will be a response, but the response will be in a controlled manner when we compare it to a normal structure. I am dealing with tune mass damper. It is a damper that is mounted on a structure to reduce the amplitude of vibration and it consisting of a mass that is mounted on springs. The application of uh, TMD it can prevent discomfort and damage to the structure and the installed uh, damper that moves in opposition to the resonance frequency of the structure. These are the advantages of a tune mass damper. Do not depend on an external power source for the operation. Respond to small level of excitation, low maintenance, and it is cost effective. And I'm also dealing with the irregular building cases. Uh, so during an earthquake, the building tends to collapse. And this is mainly due to discontinuity in their geometry, mass, stiffness, and strength. 
and the discontinuity that is actually termed as irregular buildings or irregular structures there are two kind of discontinuity that uh, first one is plan irregularity and the second one is vertical irregularity and mass irregularity that come under the vertical irregularity the seismic weight of any story that is more than 150 percentage of that the adjacent story that is termed as mass irregular buildings and this figure that represents the mass irregularity buildings and these are the literature reviews and summary of literature from the literature i got an idea that the pmb it reduces the amplitude in the structure and the same frequency of the structure and tune mass damper it shows a good response and TMT that is placed on top story that have a good performance than all other positions and this are my objectives first one is to study the performance of a portal frame tune mass damper with different mass ratios in eight story symmetrical regular building and second one is comparison of conventional TMD with portal frame TMD. And third one is to study the performance of portal frame tune mass damper with different mass ratios in mass irregularity at fourth story and mass irregularity at sixth story in an eight story building. And coming to my first objective, regular building. This is the uh, plan of a symmetrical regular building which have eight story and the four base of five meter length in both the directions and uh, the width and depth of the uh, column and uh, beam uh, in each floors that is represented in this table this is the plan elevation and 3d view of the uh, building that i modeled in sap software this is the rc building and then analysis uh, result shows that I have done the time history analysis uh, by taking the El Centro uh, earthquake as the ground motion data. And from this analysis result, I got the uh, displacement in the case of without TMD, uh, the displacement is 0.1734 meter and the time period is 1.26 seconds. And by the trial and error method was carried out with different mass ratio up to 10 percentage were done. And in the case of regular building, the limit is up to 10 percentage. That's why I took the limit as 10 percentage. And uh, here is a dimension of the TMD column and the TMD uh, beam. Um, and these both are made up of steel and uh, beam is tubular rectangular section and the column is I section. This is the uh, size of the TMD with mass ratio is equal to 10 percentage. And analysis result is as 0.1341 meter in the uh, displacement and 1.37 second in the uh, time period. And these are the graph that is obtained from the uh, software uh, without TMD and with TMD and from this graph it is easily understand that uh, with TMD it shows uh, less displacement and uh, the results such as story drift and uh, story uh, displacement, base shear and time period, the dis displacement shows that as the mass ratio get increases, the displacement is getting reduces in the case of regular building and the top story shows maximum displacement and in the case uh, of drift, uh, the 10 percentage mass ratio, that condition shows less drift. And in the case of base shear also, the 10 percentage, it shows uh, less base shear, that is uh, around um, 8,000 something. So in the case of the time period, uh, the time period is getting increased uh, as the mass ratio get increased. So all these uh, parameters, it is progressively increased or decreased as per the parameters. And this is the final table of the regular building. Uh, as the uh, mass ratio get increased, the time period uh, is also get increased and the displacement, story drift and base shear, it get decreased. So 10% shows the time period is 1.38 and story displacement as 134.147 uh, mm and story drift as 23.286 and base shear as 8,683 when compared it with without TMD, that is 10,771.65 kilonewton. And when coming to a conventional TMD, uh, the mass of the building and circular frequency that is uh, getting from the software itself, and I took a mass ratio as 10 percentage. Uh, 
for the easy uh, purpose of the comparison and the stiffness is uh, getting by uh, the manual uh, design of the uh, TMD, Portistrin TMD. And here the TMD that is added as a link element that is uh, the stiffness, the mass uh, stiffness, everything that is added to the uh, directly into the software. And uh, from the analysis I've done, uh, and I got the result as uh, when we compared it with conventional TMD and the portal from TMD, uh, that with TMD, the time period is, uh, in the case of portal frame, it is 1.4 seconds and conventional is 1.3 seconds. So the time period is get increased in the case of portal frame TMD. And in the case of the displacement, uh, the displacement, it uh, reduces to uh, 134 mm from uh, 145 mm. Uh, and the case of base shear, uh, in the case of portal frame TMD, uh, the base shear is 8,683.917. And uh, in the case of conventional TMD, it is 10,538.33 kilo, uh, kilometer. So these are the results that is uh, uh, obtained by comparing the conventional as well as the portal frame TMD. And from this, uh, we can uh, understand, easily understand that uh, the portal frame TMD it have easy installation. We are installing it by um, uh, welding, uh, by the connection of nut and bolt uh, that is uh, happening the uh, connection. So it is easy installation and it have better performance than conventional TMD. And the space can be utilized. All the uh, stories, if, if we're building with uh, eight story, all the eight story can be uh, utilized uh, effectively uh, because uh, we are constructing an uh, deformed uh, uh, frame on the top of the structure so the space can be utilized and uh, the base shear is getting uh, reduced uh, when case of conventional TMD that that indicates have that it have more capacity and uh, it have a longer lifespan uh, in the case of the building and then coming to uh, our third objective that mass regularity building as i mentioned earlier mass regularity that is uh, as a seismic weight uh, of the uh, uh, of the of this particular story is uh, 150 percentage than adjacent story mass of that particular story is 150 percentage than the adjacent story that is termed as mass regularity and in this case i have considered uh, the uh, percentage increase of 200 percentage uh, first one is first case is mass regularity at fourth story, and second one is mass regularity at sixth story. And then coming to mass regularity at fourth story without TMD, uh, the analysis result is uh, shown as uh, 0.1571 meter in the case of displacement and 1.32 uh, second in the case of time period. And uh, trial and error method was also carried out in the case of uh, with TMD with different mass ratios up to 11 percentage to know the uh, differences. So in this case, uh, the 10 percentage shows uh, better performance. Uh, so that is why I uh, chose uh, the 10 percentage uh, mass ratio or TMD. So here the uh, dimension of B TMD column and the beam that is mentioned in this table. Um, and this is the uh, 3D model with TMD. And uh, the result it shows that uh, the displacement is 0.1236 uh, meter and uh, time period is 1.41 seconds. And this is the graph that is obtained from the software. So displacement is get uh, decreased in the case of with TMD. And uh, the displacement, it shows uh, the 10 percentage shows less displacement and uh, less drift and also uh, less base shear and uh, uh, increase in uh, time period. But uh, 11 percentage shows more, uh, more value for the time period. But all other parameters such as base shear, drift and uh, displacement get reduced in the case of 10 than um, 11 percentage. And this is a final table of uh, mass regularity at fourth story. So the 10 percentage, uh, the time period is 1.48 second in x direction, and the displacement is uh, 111.842 mm, and the drift as 20.280, and uh, base shear as 8,021.67 kilonewton.
and when coming to mass irregularity sixth story this is the uh, elevation of without tmd and this is the 3d view and analysis without tmd it shows a uh, 0.1399 meter in the case of displacement also the time period as 1.38 seconds and by the trial and error method uh, of different mass ratio like, such as uh, one uh, two percentage four six eight ten and eleven uh, the ten percentage also uh, uh, found to be more effective by the analysis and uh, the dimension of column and the beam that is mentioned in this table this is a 3d model with tmd and analysis the time history analysis and model analysis were done and uh, the displacement is 0 0.1108 meter and the time is 1.47 second and uh, this is the uh, displacement uh, graph with time from the software. Uh, the TMD, with TMD graph, it shows uh, less displacement compared to without TMD. And these are the result. In the case of displacement, the displacement is also uh, reduced in the case of 10 percentage than all other percentage. And also the drift value is getting uh, decreased in case of 10 percentage. And base share also the 10 percentage shows uh, less value than all other mass ratios and the time period is getting increased in 11 percentage uh, but the difference is uh, this is not progressively increasing in the case of regular building uh, the parameters are progressively increased or progressively uh, decreased but it is not progressively increased or progressively decreased so um, this is uh, the main table of mass regularity at six story and 10 percentage it have 1.42 uh, seconds and displacement as 122.717 mm and storage drift as 22.50 second uh, 50 uh, mm and base shear as 9757.039 kilonewton and uh, the result discussion in the case of uh, regular building with TMD of mass ratio 10, the time period uh, displacement, uh, drift and base shear, that is improved, to, uh, that is uh, the time period get increased to 8.5 percentage and uh, displacement, uh, drift and base shear reduced to 23 percentage, 17.46 percentage, 27.99 percentage when compared to uh, with bare uh, with uh, rc uh, frame building and in mass regularity fourth story of 10 percentage mass ratio the time period is increased to 6.1 percentage when we compare to without tmd and the displacement story drift and base shear these are getting reduced uh, by 20.08 percentage 16.81 percentage and 27.3 percentage when compared to bare mass regularity at fourth story building and then coming to uh, the mass regularity sixth story of 10 percentage mass ratio the time period get increased uh, to 6.3 percentage the displacement base shear these are uh, reduced to 18.78 uh, 11.46 and 11.63 percentage when compared with bare mass regularity at six story building these are my conclusions. The portal frame TMD have easy installation, good seismic performance, and it have uh, good utilization of space. And second one is uh, the time period is progressively increases with increase in mass ratio in all the regular and uh, mass regular buildings. But the parameters like displacement, drift, and base is not progressively increases with mass ratio in irregular cases. And uh, the seismic performance of regular building with TMD that is found to be better than irregular cases. And uh, mass regularity that is provided up to the mid height of the building that is uh, mass regularity at fourth uh, story. It have better performance in displacement, drift and base shear and also the time period than beyond the mid height of the building with TMD. That is actually uh, the mass regularity that is provided at sixth story, ninth story building. These are the conclusions and future scope is optimization of portal frame TMD in irregular building. It can be mass regular building or stiffness regularity, such kind of irregular buildings by changing the height of the column or the position or the number of the TMD. This is my future scope. And these are my references. Thank you.
Okay, Anila. Uh, now we come to interaction session. Okay, ma'am. Okay, Anila. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Ah, yes. So this TMD is tuned mass damper, right? Yes. Uh, how do you model uh, this in SAF? Mm, this is actually by uh, by designing it by manually. I uh, already I already model with a bare building and uh, take the weight and uh, stiffness and everything and uh, also the frequency from the software. And by this all things I designed manually and I uh, founded uh, the uh, section property for all the uh, mass ratio. So uh, then I modeled modeled it in SAP software. Now, what is the element you have chosen for this TMD? Mainly the frequency. Actually, this is uh, added by uh, no, uh, just uh, 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 okay, uh, okay, I understood. Uh, I I don't it by just column and beam, uh, just like that. It's line element. It's a line element. Link element. That is by the conventional uh, conventional team. Link element. Okay. So what is the relationship between this time period and mass ratio? Uh, as a mass ratio get increases, the time period is also get increases from the analysis. Because the mass get increased, so it takes uh, more time to uh, get oh, complete the one oscillation. Okay. Okay, thank you. Hello? Anita, you mentioned yes. that this uh, TMT is cost effective, right? Oh, yes. Then what is the cost comparison? Actually, I didn't compare. I didn't compare the cost comparison in my project. Uh, but can you uh, just tell approximately how much it will? Be? That I don't. Then I don't. Uh, why you choose this SAP? SAP software for your analysis for a model. It can be. Model? It can be also done in the ETEPS, uh, but um, but uh, higher versions are available now, no? So why you choose this SAP? We can. Um, uh, the building models can be analyzed by SAP software. So, for the easy purpose of my project, I took uh, SAP software. Whether you compare with this higher higher version software? Uh, no, ma'am, I didn't do that. Then uh, you mentioned that the space utilization of uh, portal DFT is uh, very less when compared to normal yeah. one, right? Yes, and yes. Uh, how much we can reduce the area? Uh, when we are uh, come to uh, end pendulum uh, such kind of uh, TMD, it will be in a high mass that uh, and it have a great open mass in the building. So uh, in this uh, TMD, there will not be in such cases. So that is how uh, the space can be utilized. Now, any percentage of area reduction can you explain? I don't know. Then uh, you that mass regularity uh, you choose that four story and six story. Mm. Then uh, what is the basis of uh, choosing that fourth and six story? Uh, the total height of the building, uh, the total story is of the of my building is eight story. So uh, the fourth story is uh, just uh, the mid of the um, uh, my building. And uh, sixth story, it is just above the uh, mid height of my building. So, to understand uh, how the um, analysis, uh, to understand how the performance is in performance, uh, that's why uh, I adopted these two cases. 
is there any caudal provision for that for what uh, the drifter uh, for the displacement yes uh, the drifter should be uh, in point zero zero four uh, height it's just a total height uh, story height and in the case of uh, displacement uh, total height of the building by 500 is is 1893 to 2016. Okay. Very common, uh, what to say, uh, multi storied building. Uh, this mass irregularity is likely to happen uh, where? Uh, and, uh, is it a uh, uh, the the mass regularity that happens in the uh, uh, up to mid height it, it, it is uh, good, it having a good performance in the case of seismic uh, performance it have good performance. So how in practical cases this uh, mass irregularities happen in the buildings actually it means uh, 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 mass regularity. That is, uh, if uh, any, uh, the live load can be very high in the particular story or the beam or the column, the column uh, thickness or the column height will be more in that uh, in the particular story. It will all, it, these are all affect the uh, total weight of the particular story. So. Hello? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Because normally, when the uh, use changes or uh, what to say, uh, such uh, things, or when uh, a lot of facilities are provided at certain uh, floor, okay, mm -hmm. that is how, uh, in a practical case, uh, we find the mass irregularities in a mm -hmm. uh, building. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. That is what uh, she was also asking. What is the basis for? Uh, Choosing this fourth and sixth uh, floor for uh, choosing this irregularity of mass actually. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hello. Okay. Continue. Continue, Ramya. Okay, thank you, Anja. I thank hope you. there are no more questions. Okay, uh, let's call the next participant. Uh, our next participant is Ms. Gopika PP. The topic is finite element analysis of fiber reinforced concrete panels subjected to impact load and combined effect of fire and blast load. Gopika? Yes, Miss. Please share this slide. Okay, Miss. Is, is it visible? Okay, it is visible. Please uh, make it in this slide uh, presentation mode. Okay. Okay, Miss. Is it is in in the, in the presentation mode? Okay, I think it's somewhat small. Okay, it's okay. Uh, so you can start now. Okay. Miss, is it visible now? Yeah, it's visible. Continue. Okay. Okay. Good afternoon, all. I am Gopika PP. Um, my topic is finite element analysis of fiber reinforced concrete panel subjected to impact load and combined effect of fire and blast load. These are the contents. First one is introduction. 
the terrorist attacks and threats are the growing problem all over the world engineering structures in the city environment surrounded with combustible materials are prone to be in the danger of combined effects of blast induced impact loading and fire fiber reinforced concrete is concrete containing fibrous material which increases its structural integrity in recent years the fiber reinforced concretes are widely used in civil structures in this study three frc panels are used with different volume fractions of fibers that is 0.5% 1% and 1.5% uh, the uh, panels used here are steel fiber reinforced concrete panel glass fiber reinforced concrete panel and carbon fiber reinforced concrete panel this study mainly considers the effect of impact load and combined effect of fire and blast load on frc panels and compares the result this is the analytical study done using ansys software Next is objectives. Uh, first objective is to study the mechanical behavior of FRC panels that is a steel fiber reinforced concrete panel, glass fiber reinforced concrete panel and carbon fiber reinforced concrete panel and next to analyze the models under the effect of impact loading and combined effect of fire and blast load by finite element analysis using ANSYS software then to compare the models to choose a best model from alternatives. These are the literature reviews that I am referred. Next, research gap. By review of literatures, it can be summarized that experimental and analytical studies of FRC panels are carried out by different volume fractions of fibers, applying different single and combined loads on the panels. Mainly, SFRC panels and ferrocement panels subjected to different loads are conducted by researchers. work has been reviewed from city impact. It is found that no studies have been con conducted on glass fiber reinforced concrete and carbon fiber reinforced concrete panels subjected to impact load and combined effect of fire and blast load. So the main aim of this study is to compare SFRC, GFRC and CFRC panels subjected to impact loads and combined effect of blast and fire load by FEM analysis in ANSYS software to find the best model. These are, these are the methodology. First is uh, topic selection, then literature survey, then comparative study about FRC panels back load and combined effects of fire and blast load then modeling using ANSYS software then analysis result and discussion then at last conclusion next is modeling modeling details here nine models are created in ANSYS software to analyze the models under combined effect of fire blast and impact loading by FEM analysis the size of panel is 400 by 400 by 50 mm this table shows the details of model that is S5 that uh, the description is uh, steel fiber reinforced concrete panel with 0.5% of steel fiber, S10 steel fiber reinforced concrete panel with 1% of steel fiber, then S15 steel fiber reinforced concrete panel with 1.5% of steel fiber. So G, then G5, G10 the, and G5 are glass fiber reinforced concrete panels with 0.5% and 1% and 1.5% of glass fiber. Then C5, C10 and C15 are carbon fiber reinforced concrete panel with 0.5, 1% and 1.5% of carbon fiber. Then next is input parameters. This table shows the steel fiber properties used in SFRC panels in ANSYS modeling. Type of fiber is hooked and steel fiber. Length is 56 mm. Then diameter is 0.7 mm. Then aspect ratio. It is the ratio of length to diameter that is 80. Density is 76,982.2 into 10 raised to minus 9 newton per mm square. Percentage of fiber use 0.51 and 1.5% of total volume of panel. Orientation is random. Then this table shows the glass fiber properties used in ANSYS modeling. Type of fiber straight in glass fiber, length 12 mm, diameter 0.014 mm, aspect ratio 857.14, tensile strength 1699.98, percentage of fibers used 0.51% and 1.5% of total volume of panel, orientation random. Then this table shows carbon fiber properties used in uh, ANSYS modeling type of fiber straightened uh, carbon fiber length 25 mm thickness uh, 0.5 mm tensile strength 4900 newton per mm square percentage of fiber use 0.51 and 1.5 percent of total volume of panel orientation random this table shows concrete properties used in FRC panel compressive strength is 40 newton per mm square Young's modulus 30,000 newton per mm square Poisson's ratio 0 0.16 then density 23,535.9 6 into 10 raised to minus 9 newton per mm cube. 
Next is modeling. This figure shows the modeling of FR SFRC panel with 0.5% of steel fiber. This figure 2 shows modeling of SFRC panel with 1% steel fiber in ANSYS. Then this matched the model of SFRC panel with 1% steel fiber. This figure shows the modeling of SFRC panel with 1.5% of steel fiber. Then this is the modeling of GFRC panel with 0.5% of glass fiber. And then this this figure shows the modeling of GFRC panel with 1% of glass fiber. Then this figure shows the modeling of GFRC panel with 1.5% of glass fiber. This uh, figure shows modeling of CFRC panel with 0.5% of carbon fiber. Then this figure shows the modeling of CFRC panel with 1% carbon fiber. Then this figure shows modeling of CFRC panel with 1.5% of carbon fiber. Then next is analysis of panels under fire loading. All panels are heated for 120 minutes according to the standard temperature time history curve suggested by ISO 834 that is fire resistance test elements of building construction pattern. The panel was heated uniformly on one phase only. This figure shows the standard temperature time curve of indoor fire by ISO 834. The standard temperature time curve is defined by the following expression that is T equal to T0 plus 345 log of 80 plus 1. T0 is initial temperature and T is ambient temperature subjected to fire after T minutes. Here uh, initial temperature taken is 20 degrees Celsius and time is 120 minutes. So T equal to 1049 degrees Celsius. Then this figure shows the uh, applying fire load on one phase of FRC panels and the figure 13 shows temperature time history curve data input in ANSYS. Then from the curve it is found that when panels are heated for 120 minutes the temperature increases with time at a constant rate. Temperature distribution in concrete panels tend to increase with temperature fire. Then analysis of panels under blast loading in ANSYS. Blast load as per the IS 4991 1968 that is criteria for blast resistant design of structures for explosions above ground. A blast is a rapidly moving shock wave which may release pressure many times greater than those experienced under the greatest of the hurricanes. Then calculation of peak over pressure according to IS 4991-1968 for general guidance the buildings may be designed for a bare charge of 100 kg and for community building stand up distance is 30 meter equivalent weight of TNT that is in W in kilogram scaled distance set is R by W raised to 1 by 3 R is the distance from the point of interest to the detonation source W is the weight of the explosive measured in tons so scaled distance set equal to 64.65 meter the maximum value of the positive side on over pressure are caused by the explosion of one ton explosive from the point of explosion from IS 4991-1968 are given in the following table. This table shows the blast pressure for 100 kilogram charge that is for 100 kilogram TNT charge standoff distance uh, 30 meter and the scale distance obtained is 64.65 then blast pressure is 0.35 kilogram per centimeter square. Blast pressure was applied on same phase on which temperature was applied. This figure shows applying pressure on FRC panel. Then analysis of panels under impact load. Impact load is the sudden load acting on any structural member. Low velocity impact is considered. Impact behavior of the panel subjected to hammer loading is considered. Hammer is made of structural steel. This table shows details of hammer. The modulus of velocity is 2 newton raised to 11 pascal. Poison ratio 0.3. Bulk modulus 1.66 in newton raised to 11 pascal. Density 2850 kilogram per meter cube. Hammer diameter 0.1 meter. Hammer weight 10 kilogram. Uh, then impact Impact velocity 5 meter per second. Uh, this figure shows panel subjected to hammer loading and the figure 16 shows applying impact velocity on FRC panel. Then result and discussion. Panel subjected to combined fire and blast load. The results obtained by applying combined fire and blast load to FRC panels are mentioned below. First one total deformation. Total deformation is the change in shape of a body caused by application of a force. This figure shows the total deformation of S5. Uh, this uh, figure 18 shows total deformation of S10. Then uh, total deformation of S15. Then figure 20 total deformation of G5. Then figure 21, 22, 23 total deformation of G5. C10, G15 and C5 and this uh, figure shows total deformation of C10 and C15. This table shows the maximum total deformation value in MM. 
uh, this graph shows the comparison of maxi maximum total deformation. Total deformation is higher for G5 and lower for C15. So C15 is better in case of total deformation. The total deformation reduction in S5, S10, S15, G5, G10, G15, C5 and C10 when compared to C15 are 3.03%, 5.09%. 0 0.1, 5.64, 3.01%, 0.82%, 0.2%, and 2.59%. From the graph, it is observed that as percentage of fiber increases, deformation decreases. In this case, CFRC is better. Next is equivalent stress. Equivalent stress consider different effect resulting from multi axial residual stress states. Uh, this table shows maximum equivalent stress value. This graph shows comparison of maximum equivalent stress. Equivalent stress is higher for S5 and lower for C15. The percentage of equivalent stress reduction in S5, S10, S15, G5, G10, G15, C5, C and C10 when compared to C15 are 69.89, 68.23, 67.87, 2.09, 1.04, 1.05, 1.06, 1.07, 1.08, 1.09, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.
In this case, in back load, the percentage of equivalent stress reduction is maximum for S5 when compared to C15, that is 69.9%. Then equivalent strain is lower for C15 when compared to others in the case of combined fire and blast load and in the case of impact load. In the case of fire and blast load, the percentage of equivalent strain reduction is maximum for C5 when compared to C15, that is 2.51%. In the case of impact load the percentage of equivalent strain reduction is maximum for G5 when compared to C15 that is 2.48 percent models with 1.5 percentage of fibers shows minimum equivalent strain and models with 0.5 percent of fibers shows maximum equivalent strain so as the percent of fiber increases equivalent strain decreases so models with higher percentage of fibers show better performance based on the analysis and discussion C15 shows better performance in the case of combined fire and blast load and in the case of impact load from my study it can be concluded that as fiber content increases strength of panel also increases these are the uh, references then thank you okay, thank you Bobita. your question answer session starts now okay Okay, go Biva. Okay, miss. Hello. Hello, miss. Okay. Uh, can you tell me that what is the importance of this uh, equivalence stress and equivalence strain in your study? Uh, How do you find out find this equivalence stress and uh, it is to find the strength of the concrete panels that I am analyzed. Strength. You'll be getting the strength from the equivalent stress and strain. Yes. Uh, it can be uh, from equivalent stress and strain. Uh, it can be found that it is. Uh, it can be resist the strength. Hello, Miss. Okay, you can tell. Then, uh, characteristics of panels can be uh, analyzed from the equivalent stress and strain values. So, this C15 got maximum equivalent stress value. What is your um, Finding from that I ninety eight. C fifteen is bet. C fifteen that is con carbon reinforced concrete panel with one point five percent of carbon fiber shows better performance. The strength of that panel is good when compared to others. It shows better performance than others. Okay. What are the limitations of your uh, study? The limitations. I don't think about the limitations. this uh, the software does not uh, say anything about uh, the orientation it is uh, just the percentage uh, the orientation could uh, uh, change and the orientation can have any impact on uh, the performance here i uh, choose randomly oriented uh, fibers are randomly oriented 
it may the orientation may affect the orientation may affect the performance Uh, okay, random orientation is assumed and uh, the study is carried out. Okay, eh? Yes. Gopika? Yes, miss. Um, actually, you done this work using software, right? Uh, yes, miss. Actually, if you are uh, making a panel of uh, size, also you mentioned some uh, dimension of the panel. For 400 by 400 uh, by 50 mm. From where you got mm. that, how you arrived that panel size? Uh, I choose the panel size from my base journal. Only from journal. Okay, if you are making that panel in actual uh, site and you are testing, what are the changes? Uh, that will affect the uh, actual work, actual preparation of this slab using this combination. In the case of practic, uh, according to practical section, it's somewhat difficult to make the fiber reinforced concrete panel. Nowadays, but it is app. Uh, somewhere it is used in many countries. So, what are the control control uh, we want to fix during this manufacture of this fiber reinforced concrete panels? Uh, miss, Question. what are the control or precautions we want to take during the manufacture of this type of uh, fiber reinforced panel? Firstly, uh, we decide the uh, rain, um, fibers, the thickness you of fibers. You are mixing that uh, uh, mix uh, the quantity quantity of the, that fibers you are mixing and uh, compaction. Everything, it will affect the property of the slab. Then uh, how you are incorporating that changes into your software modeling? software studies by using the software mm -hmm. no, I don't know is there any provision for incorporating no. actual field condition into our uh, analysis modeling? No. Uh, in in this analysis modeling, the uh, the method uh, like compaction, somewhat etc. Was the compaction not... is a factor. Yes. In this analytical uh, method, uh, it is not uh, considered. Else, uh, if you want to make a manual slab and you want to check the uh, properties manually as well as in software, then you can tell uh, that uh, analysis is almost correct. Nowadays, a uh, fine. Then one more doubt. Uh, you are choosing this uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 1, and 1.5 percentage for uh, SFR, GFRCP, and uh, CFRCP, right? Then uh, whether you check the combination of uh, these three material, glass, carbon fiber, and these three combination of these three with these uh, with, uh, with these three proportions, combination of these three mix. No. I consider the uh, that is also possible, right? Yes, carbon it's also fiber possible. with the glass. 
Yes, it is also yeah, possible. Then only you can tell uh, that uh, that combination is uh, that combination will give a better performance. Okay. But he, then how he, uh, how do you get this uh, point five one and one point five? That's also from my base journal. So this work is already uh, same proportion. Somebody already done right, or uh, you made some innovations or your contribution? Yes, uh, yes. In researchers found uh, some uh, works by using steel fiber reinforced concrete panels with varying fract volume fractions. Only by uh, applying single load, that is, only by considering the blast load, the combination co com combination of loads were not considered in any other. So I took it as an innovative part of my project. Okay. Is there any questions? No, miss. Okay, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kutika. Uh, so, uh, let's move on to our last participant, Kartika K. The topic is seismic performance of combined polygonal braced frames. Kartika? Yes, ma'am. Please share this slide. Okay. Ma'am, is the screen visible? Yes, it is, it is visible. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon all. I am Kartika and I am here to present on the paper Seismic Performance of Combined Polygonal Braced Frames. And these are all the contents to be discussed in this section. And coming to the introduction, uh, we all know that the bracing systems are used to resist the horizontal forces like the seismic action, wind load, etc., and to transmit that to the foundations. And this system reduces the bending moment as well as the shear forces in the core. And while providing the braces in the stretcher, it helps to transfer the load sideways and reducing the sway of the stretcher, and this becomes more stable. And coming to different types of braces, the first one is concentric braces. And the braces are said to be concentric if the center line of the bracing members are intersected with that of the beams and columns. And some of the examples are X braces, K braces, V braces, inverted V shaped braces, etc., which are shown in the figure. And the next one is eccentric braces. And these types of braces are, are made up of two short diagonal braces, which connecting the column to the middle span of the beam with a short segment of the beam. The examples of eccentric braces are shown here. And the next one is polygonal brace difference. And these are innovative type of brace difference, which contain certain modules of different polygons like diamond, hexagon, octagon, etc. And here comes the hexa-shaped braces. Uh, that is, it contains V-shaped and inverted V-shaped braces in different stories, which forming an hexagonal bracing configuration over three stories, which are shown in the figure. And here it is just a combined system, which comprising of continuous columns and the braces for the seismic resistance. And the next one is octa braced frame. And it contains this octagonal bracing configuration over the three stories as shown in figure. And coming to the literature review. And summary of literature review, that is while we're using this large, large sized braces in tall buildings, it just decreases the lateral displacement, drift ratio, uplift force in the foundation, and increases the ductility. And uh, the buckling controlled braces not only improves the seismic performance, they reduces the ductility demand. And the seismic performance of different buildings in terms of seismic performance point shows that inverted V-shaped braces, V-shaped braces and super braced frames uh, buildings have higher capacity than the other buildings. And this XR-shaped braces 
system can achieve a goal of uniform distribution of lateral deformation in order to reduce the soft theory failure. And coming to the objective, the main objective of the study was to study and analyze the seismic performance of combined polygonal brace to frame and to achieve that first to obtain the uh, obtain the seismic performance of exa brace to frame and octa brace to frame and a comparative study of this exa shaped exa and octa shaped frames. And these are the methodology. And the first one is the seismic performance evaluation of the frame without any braces. And here the frame that opted was 8 storied and a 12 storied frame. And both nonlinear static and nonlinear dynamic analysis, analysis was done in the SAP 2000 software. And coming to the frame details, the height of the ground floor is 5.49 meter and the rest of the floors having a height of 3.66 meter. And these are the sections used for the eight story frame. That is, members and the sections are shown in the table. And these are the geometric properties used for eight story frame. And these are the sections used for the 12 story frame, and it was its geometric properties. And coming to its material properties, the yield strength of the steel is 420 megapascal, and the Young's modulus was 2 into 10 raised to 5 megapascal, and the coefficient of thermal expansion 1.2 into 10 raised to minus 5 1 by C, and the density was 7850 kilogram per meter cube, and the Poisson ratio is 0 0.3. And here, coming to the modeling section, first you have modeled eight storied uh, frame without any braces, and it was 12 storied frame without any braces. And here, uh, coming to this analysis part, here we have done both pushover analysis and as well as time history analysis and uh, pushover analysis. Here, uh, displacement control pushover analysis was carried out and the target displacement was set for 4% of total height of the building and the support used was fixed support. And the capacity curve, which is considered as the main product of pushover analysis, it was a, it was a graph showing base shear versus displacement, and it just represents this global response of the structure. And here we can see that a uh, capacity curve of both eight story and the twelve story frame without any braces. And here the base shear obtained for the eight story frame was uh, four thousand one hundred fifteen kilonewton, and the corresponding displacement was 0 0.42 meter. And in case of 12 storage frame, it was 4869 kilonewton and the displacement was 1.4 meter. And then coming to the time history analysis, the nonlinear, it was a nonlinear dynamic analysis, and the frames were subjected to an earthquake ground alterations of a central 1940 earthquake, and the ground motion records were scaled to the same alteration value, which is equal to 0.5 G. And the story displacement and industry drift ratio was considered as a result of time history analysis. And the story displacement, it is just defined as the total displacement of area story with respect to the ground. And here, the story displacement was subjected to a central earthquake for both 8 storied and the 12 storied frames uh, without any braces is illustrated here. And here we can see that in case of 8 storied frame, it was 42 centimeter. And in case of 12 storied frame, it was 64 centimeter. And according to this story drift limitations from IS code uh, 1893 2016, uh, it was limited to 0.004 H. And here it was 1.464 centimeter. And uh, here for both 8 story and the 12 story frame, it was just exceeded. So in order to uh, limit these values, the one of the best um, and the best solution was the uh, was to uh, incorporate braces. And here the seismic performance evaluation of exa brace to frame. And the first one is modeling. Here we have modeled eight storied exa brace to frames. And this is 12 storied external shaped braces. And the capacity curve. That is, in case of uh, exa shaped braces, um, the low deformation curve was illustrated here. That is, in case of eight storied. Uh, frame it was 16,816 kilonewton and the corresponding displacement was 0.71 m and in case of 12 storied frame it was 18,727 kilonewton and the corresponding displacement was 1 m and coming to the story displacement uh, in case of 8 storied frame we can see that the story displacement was 0.08 cm and in case of 12 storied frame it was 0.72 cm and while we are saying about industry drift ratio, uh, we can say that in case of eight storied extra shaped braces, it was 0 
0.0948 percentage and in case of 12 storied frame it was 0.00732 percentage and the next one is the seismic performance evaluation of octa-based frame and here we have modeled eight story octa-based frame and it is eight story uh, sorry 12 story uh, octa-based frame and coming to its analysis uh, uh, after pushover analysis we obtained a capacity curve of uh, both 8 storied and the 12 storied octa based frame and here in case of 8 storied octa based frame we can we have obtained a base shear of 10220 kilonewton and the displacement was 0.58 mm and in case of 12 storied frame it was 13239 kilonewton and their corresponding displacement was 0.82 mm and coming to the story displacement Mm, here we can see in case of 8 storied octa based frame it was 0.18 cm and in case of 12 storied octa based frame it was 0.86 cm and then uh, in the story drift ratio of 8 storied octa based frame was 0.00136 percentage and in case of 12 storied frame it was 0.00819 percentage and here we can see a comparison of both hexagonal bracing system and octagonal bracing system. And uh, the parameters that we opted was base shear, storage displacement, and interstory drift ratio. And when we are comparing this hexa based frame with octa based frame, we can see that in case of both 8 storage and the 12 storage frame, uh, base shear was found to be more for hexa based frame, which indicating it have a higher capacity than octa based frame. And then comparing the results obtained from um, time history analysis. Uh, in case of story displacement, it was found to be within limit for both exa based frame and octa based frame. And this exa based frame have lower story displacement and in the story drift ratio percentage than octa based frame, which showing it have higher strength and stiffness. So we can say that exa based frame have greater lateral load carrying capacity than octa based frame. And the next one is the seismic performance evaluation of combined polygonal braced frame. Here I have combined both hexagonal and octagonal bracing configuration. And uh, the first here we have modeled eight storied combined polygonal braced frame. And the next one is 12 storied combined polygonal braced frame. And coming to its capacity curve, we can see that in case of eight storied frame, it was um, base shear was base shear obtained was. 20,824 kilonewton and their corresponding displacement was 0.82 mm and in case of 12 storied combined polygonal based frame it was 24,531 kilonewton and their displacement was 1.3 mm and coming to its story displacement uh, which is subjected to um, El Centro earthquake motion for both 8 storied and the 12 storied frame was illustrated here and in case of uh, 8 storied frame it was 0.0308 cm and in case of 12 storied frame it was 0.53 cm and this was uh, in the story drift ratio uh, and in case of 8 storied combined polygonal based frame it was 0.003 percentage and in case of 12 storied frame it was 0.008196 percentage and here we can see a summarization of the result and here coming to the conclusion you can see that there's a good improvement in the seismic resistance of the frames with the incorporation of these braces and the results reveal that the bracing elements are very effective in diminishing the drift since the reduction of this industry drift with respect to the unbraced frames and the results of time history analysis were similar to that of pushover analysis such that the braced frame shows lower displacement and damage in comparison with unbraced frames and it is seen that combined polygonal braced frame shows greater lateral load capacity than exa braced frame and octa braced frame and this combined polygonal braced frame show lower storage displacement in the ratio which indicating these systems have strength and stiffness than exa braced and octa braced frame and the seismic performance of different buildings in terms of the performance points shows that this combined polygonal braced buildings have higher capacity than this exa braced frame and octa braced frame and coming to the future scope the study can be in can be extended with different other types of this polygonal braced frame including further variety configuration of combined polygonal braced frames and the three-dimensional aspects of this assessment of ductility of 
parallel based frame should also be explored. And these are other reference. Thank you. Hello. Okay, Kartika. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, Kartika. Yes, ma'am. So, which system of bracing shows better performance? Uh, while comparing this exa braced and octa braced frame, we can say that exa braced one is more effective. But uh, when while we are dealing about this combined polygonal braced frame, uh, it has more than that of both the six and octa. Ma'am, so can you uh, take the slide number thirty-three? Thirty-three. Oh, one minute, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Can you explain the graph one more time? What is this uh, variation uh, in front? Uh, ma'am, in case of this eight storage frame, uh, the in the storage drift, uh, drift ratio was found to be 0 0.003 percentage. In case of this 12 storage frame, uh, value one minute, ma'am. Um, oh, the value was 0.0027 percentage. Like uh, this in the storage drift ratio found to be um, lower while we are while the height is increasing and it is found to be more in middle floors and all. Okay. As the height increases, uh, there will be non-uniform variations we're seeing. Okay, Miss. 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 Kartika. Ah, yes, ma'am. You chose two type of bracing, right? Yes, ma'am. Any other type of bracings are available? Um, ma'am, actually, it was in, you know, like um, and we can do in pentagon, like we can do. Actually, okay. we are doing that. Uh, Some other polygon shape also we can make. Like a diamond, pentagon, and all. Like a diamond and all was already done. Okay. Okay. Then combined polygonal bracing, uh, you arrange. No? Is there yes. any uh, arrangement uh, mm -hmm. that how many number of hexagonal and how many number of octagonal? Uh, Ma'am, uh, actually, uh, here, um, here I have chosen a combination of both this. And first, you can see that. Uh, Accordingly, here I have arranged this first one as an octagon, hexagon, octagon, and more. Uh, we have given this octagonal configuration. Actually, we can arrange like further varieties and all. We can do that. Here, arrangement also affect the analysis, no? Yes, ma'am. Here, actually, I have uh, done only one. Yeah, that the analysis variation also you want to study uh, oh, okay. for the better result. Okay, okay. I think I'll do it. Then that uh, story drift limitation, you uh, one hmm. limited limit uh, limitation value you mentioned yes. one zero point zero zero. Yeah. yeah. From which code you got that value? IS eighteen ninety three two thousand sixteen. Okay. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Matthew, sir. Uh, yes. 
there are any questions? No more questions from the participants. Uh, you may please find okay. out. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, is there any questions from the audience? I think there are no more questions. And uh, here we come to the end of our session. And next, I uh, I would like to invite our chairs uh, to speak something uh, about the presentations, uh, like uh, feedback or suggestions, uh, which will be helpful for our participants also and for the audience. So uh, first, I invite uh, Dr. Matthew Levy, sir, please. Uh, first of all, I should uh, congratulate uh, uh, all the uh, people who have uh, contributed uh, papers uh, to the conference. Uh, uh, they should, uh, uh, what is it? They have done a very good job. Uh, but uh, uh, I think uh, uh, before uh, being given for uh, what is it? A publication, uh, uh, some more uh, fine tuning uh, has to be. Uh, carried out actually. Uh, I just uh, would like to congratulate uh, all the participants and uh, those who have uh, organized uh, organized the conference. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your valuable suggestion. And next, I uh, invite a respected Lindsay Koshi, ma'am, to speak a few words to us. Thank you, Ramya. Uh, yeah, it was a very good section, and I congratulate all the participants who actually participated uh, in this paper presentation. And uh, I think most of the papers are analytical, maybe due to this uh, condition, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and also I appreciate the College of Engineering, Kalashiri, for arranging uh, this international conference. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. So uh, here we come to the end of our session. And uh, it's a great honor to express my sincere gratitude to our respected chairs. First, Dr. Matthew Vivi and UC Koshi, ma'am, uh, who have been here uh, with us lively during the end of the presentation. Uh, thank you, sir. And uh, thank you, ma'am. And uh, I also uh, I would like to invite thank to each and every one of you are here uh, to be with us during the presentation. Thank you so much. So uh, let's wind up the session. And uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.